Hello, hello, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining the webinar today. Uh, we are very excited to bring you our first ever charity panel style webinar um, about Giving Tuesday. As co-founders of Giving Tuesday in Canada, we at Canada Helps and Give3 are looking forward to you to hearing stories and get inspired by our guest panelists. So just to quickly run through the agenda for today's presentation, um, we are going to start off with a brief introduction about Canada Helps and the Giving Tuesday movement. You'll get to meet our moderator and guest panelists for this session, followed by a discussion about Giving Tuesday and each of our wonderful guest charities campaigns. After the discussion, we are going to take a few questions from our audience members. And lastly, and make sure you stick around for this, we will end off the presentation with some quick insights and tactics to help you get ready for Giving Tuesday. So make sure you hang around. Okay, so just quickly, for those of you who don't know about Canada Helps, uh, we build fundraising tools to empower and help charities become more self-sustainable. For charities, we offer open access to our full suite of affordable online fundraising tools with full donor information. We also provide educational resources so charities can better understand their donors and steward them along their journey. For donors, we've offered a convenient, safe and trusted destination for donating to and fundraising for all registered Canadian charities for more than 19 years. More than 2 million Canadians have donated over $1 billion through Canada Helps. And to date, over 20,000 charities across Canada rely on Canada Helps fundraising tools to build capacity. So that is enough about us. Um, before I hand over to the fantastic Woodrow, we are going to dive first into a poll. We really want to kind of make this a little bit interactive for you guys. Um, so we are going to pop that up now. Um, and then I'll just leave it a little while for you guys to answer. So the first question we have for you is, have you or your charity participated in Giving Tuesday in the past? It'd be great to know where you guys are all up to. Just getting those answers in. Ooh. Okay, and we will pop the results up on here. Um, so 58%, yes, you have, amazing. You're coming back for another campaign. 32%, no, amazing. Coming in for the first campaign, we're gonna make sure it's an amazing one. And 10%, not sure. Well, it definitely be a yes after this year. So thank you so much for that. Awesome. Um, so now I'm going to hand it over to Woodrow to talk about Giving Tuesday um, and lead us into the panel discussion. Woodrow, over to you. Thanks, Laura. I'm just going to take control over here. Uh, thanks for having me on today. I'm calling you today from from Mumbai, where um, Giving Tuesday is, is the only place in the world uh, where we Giving Tuesday participated at a different time of the year. So in India, it happens in October. So I'm here for Giving Tuesday 2019 in India. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I'm going to talk very briefly about Giving Tuesday. I'm sure even those that haven't run campaigns have some idea of what Giving Tuesday is about. Um, it's a couple of just important things to keep in mind. First of all, there is no right way to do Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday is co-created by all of the thousands and thousands of Canadian charities that participate every year. Um, there's no one type of campaign or one type of engagement that works or is, the, or is the correct way to do it. It really is all about creativity and finding ways to engage in your supporters and celebrate generosity. I think most people probably know by now that Giving Tuesday was launched in 2012 in the U.S. Um, it was a day for giving after the two days for consumption. We have Black Friday, we have Cyber Monday. What if we had a day for giving back? And Canada was the first country that, um, that really expanded Giving Tuesday outside of the U.S. Um, now, that idea that anywhere, anyone ever, anywhere can give, that open platform, has really spread around the world quite rapidly. We've seen Giving Tuesday activity in literally every single country and territory around the globe. That includes Antarctica. That includes North Korea. It really is a truly global celebration, probably our only truly global celebration, um, and growing all the time. There are now over 60 official movement, country-level movements um, around the world. 
just as there is in Canada, where uh, a group, an organization, or a coalition has come together, as we did in Canada in 2013, to to shepherd the movement and um, and be the stewards of, of its growth. Um, and the movement looks different in every country, just as it looks different in the 40 plus communities across Canada that celebrate Giving Tuesday. We certainly see a lot of that practice shared um, across those groups, um, but how it's expressed in each place really depends on, on the culture in that location. And uh, last year we had a huge Giving Tuesday, it was our biggest ever in Canada and around the world, and, and we're here to be even bigger. So, uh, we've got uh, we've got some insights and, and advice for, for you guys today about your, about your Giving Tuesday campaigns and how to make the most of it. One of the best ways to learn about Giving Tuesday is to hear um, to tell you how they made Giving Tuesday successful for them. And we've got um, three great panelists with us today. From Fred Victor in Toronto, we have Inta, uh, we have Hannah from Ten Oaks in Ottawa, and Karen from Queens, Nova Scotia in Dartmouth. Um, and we're going to hear from them about what they did. So we want to hear about uh, each of you who are panelists first. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, Inta to kick it off and tell us um, about her and her organization. Inta? Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, I'm Inta and I'm from Fred Victor. And we are a wonderful organization that helps people who are homeless. We operate shelters, drop-in centers, transitional housing, affordable housing for men, women, uh, families, and people with pets. We also have quite a bit of food programming and lots of health services. So basically, we focus uh, to help people to get back on their feet. And uh, we've been around for over 125 years, and I'm very proud to say that we are very, very committed to ending homelessness in Toronto. Sorry, I've had trouble unmuting myself for a second. Thank you. Uh, Hannah, uh, can, you, uh, can you introduce yourself and your organization? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having us. Um, so my name is, is Hannah Magecki. Um, I'm the executive director of a nonprofit in Ottawa called the Ten Oaks Project. Uh, and so we run summer camp programs for children and youth from 2S LGBTQ identities, families, and communities. Uh, we've been doing this for about 15 years. And the goal of our, our programs is to break down isolation that a lot of the, the children and youth uh, and the families that we serve face um, and help them build uh, both skills to take back into their their lives and their communities um, and also build lifelong communities for themselves of, of support. Um, a lot of the, the youth that we work with experience a lot of discrimination, a lot of homophobia and transphobia and having these lifelong um, networks and, and friendships is essential to their well-being. All right. Thanks, Anna. Um, I think this is now working, Karen. Um, Karen, I, can, you, uh, can you introduce yourself and your organization, Feed Nova Scotia? For sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for taking a few minutes uh, to join with us today. I, um, I'm the Director of Development and Communications at Feed Nova Scotia. We are a registered charity um, that has an annual budget of just shy of $5 million. All of that is raised through um, donations. We are not a government-funded organization. Our mission is to increase food security through food distribution, education, and collaboration. Uh, most people will know us for the food distribution component of our work, uh, primarily. And in that role, we distribute about 2 million kilograms of food each year uh, out to a network of 143 food banks, shelters, soup kitchens, and uh, other types of meal programs across the province. We've been in business uh, as a charity for about 35 years, um, and yeah, looking forward to talking about our Giving Tuesday work. Great. Thanks, Dan. Um, so, Laura, I'm just going to ask you to jump in here and take control of these slides, because I don't seem to be able to. But while, while you're looking at that, maybe what I'll do is uh, ask our audience another question. Um, so we're curious about what kind of campaign you're planning to run this year. Um, so tell us what your objectives for this year's Giving Tuesday campaign might be. You can select more than one uh, if you have multiple objectives, but 
let us know, if you know, uh, what you plan to do for Giving Tuesday this year. And if you're not sure yet, feel free to be shy just to click don't know yet, that's okay. We're just trying to get a sense of whether people have started their planning and whether they have an idea of what they want to accomplish this year. Um, this is Karen. I'm happy to chime in just by saying what I'm seeing on my screen is that there definitely seems to be a front runner here with most people on the call um, are looking to bring in more donations and then driving greater awareness to the charity being a close second runner-up. Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite interesting that, uh, that, that awareness for charities is, uh, is such a high result. Those two things really being what people are talking about, uh, about doing this year. So um, great. There's certainly lots of opportunity to do those things. Um, um, so sorry about that, guys. We're, we are having some technical difficulties just with the slides, and I think uh, they're controlled now for the Canada Health team. That should work a little bit better. And uh, we would like to hear from you about, about last year's campaign. So can you tell us about what your goals were and, and how your campaign rolled out last year? <laughs> Absolutely. So last year, our main goal was to actually boost our holiday campaign, and of course, as well as uh, a boost, uh, some uh, raise some awareness around our charity. So what happens usually before Giving Tuesday? Of course, we have kind of um, done like a soft launch for our holiday campaign, and that would be through direct mail and just talking to our supporters. So we used actually Giving Tuesday as a, like an activation event, like a hard launch of our holiday campaign. So that was definitely one of our goals to go out on the streets and spread the word and be very, really, really focused to our holiday campaign. Oh, and so, um, so and tell us how, how did that work out for you? How did your how did your um, results compare to where you were hoping to be? Uh, absolutely. So definitely um, a huge thing what we did last year, we really put in some lot of time, a lot of planning in our social media. So about three weeks in advance, we started really, really planning and prepping our social media strategy because uh, this year we really wanted to go a lot bigger. So we were actually expecting um, a good results comparing to a uh, year before. Uh, so we were really, really focused because our goal was to raise at least, uh, I think we were going to go for at least $7,000 on that day, but we definitely exceeded that. So we're very, very happy um, about that. Great, congratulations. Um, Hannah, how did things go for you guys last year? Uh, they were they were wonderful. <laughs> so our, our goal was to raise um, five thousand dollars, and we we beat that. We made just over seven thousand. Um, and what we've done for the past few years, as you can you can see on your slides, um, we've asked our board of directors to be our um, our match for the day. Uh, so in advance, I asked them each to, to make a, a donation or to, to pledge an amount of, of any kind, um, but we've had 100% participation of the board for the past three years, which is a really powerful thing to be able to say to donors that 100% of our board is, is giving themselves. Um, and so I, I asked them to, to make a commitment, and then I sort of tallied up, and that's our matching amount. So last year they said we can match up to $2,500. Uh, and so we... Um, we put that through our social media um, and our, our MailChimp and all of that, um, and we way surpassed it, which was really wonderful. Great. Again, congratulations. Uh, we'll hear a little bit more about your where, where you plan to go with this uh, this year. Um, but first, let's hear from Karen and Steve Nova Scotia. Sure. Um, and before I even just speak to last year, I have to go back five years. Speed Nova Scotia has been participating in Giving Tuesday for five years. We have run the same campaign format for all five of those years. And in the first year, um, there were very few organizations in the province. We were kind of an early adopter, if you will, um, into the Giving Tuesday movement. And our concept was we knew that uh, matching gifts had worked really well for us in the past, and we had been without a matching gift campaign for a couple of years. So we um, recruited uh, Sobeys as a matching gift sponsor for that day with a, a donation of matching up to $10,000. And what we do is keep the messaging very simple. It's simply um, Sobeys will match all donations made that day to a total of $10,000. 
when we launched in that first year, we had no idea what we would expect for financial support, but 10000 on that day would have been amazing. We actually went way over that. Uh, in that first year alone, we got 400 donations on Giving Tuesday, which was 20 times the number of donations we would normally get in a typical day at that time of year. So we immediately recognized that this was awesome. Um, and in subsequent years, we kept on uh, building on that same concept. It was really important for us to demonstrate to Sobeys as our sponsor the value that they were getting in terms of lots of social media exposure in particular. We use social media and email to drive um, financial donations as the, the primary vehicle. What were your results last year? Uh, awesome. <laughs> so quite honestly, year over year, the campaign has continued to grow for us. Um, and I know people can see on the slide here that in response to the increased support from the community, Sobeys is now this year for the first time increasing their matching gifts to 25000 instead of 10000 We felt that we needed to demonstrate the community that um, they too are coming to the table with more generous support because the community has been coming with more generous support. So last year, um, and it's really important to us that we're very transparent with all of our messaging, um, we actually raised on that day over $200,000. So clearly we went way above and beyond the matching gift total amount, um, but people continue to be inspired by the concept of a matching gift. So for me, that's the biggest learning in all of our activities has been the power of a matching gift campaign. Amazing result. And, and it's so exciting to see that campaign grow year over year from, for five years running. Um, mm -hmm. And so our, our next question for you guys is about um, about what works and, and challenges. So um, Karen, maybe you can you can speak to this a little bit more in depth. Um, matching gifts. We often are worried that when the match is exceeded, that we've got a communication problem. Now you guys are are finally seeing a, a more than double of the match this year. But how have you managed to deal with that issue of raising $200,000 on a $10,000 match and, yeah. and kind of keeping this fresh as opposed to, you know, making it a tradition and as opposed to trying to have to do something new every year? Well, and I think that's just it. We haven't tried to make it fresh. We have, um, we've deliberately kept the message the same very clear, very simple, $1 equals $2, but always with the line that it's matching up to um, a maximum of $10,000. So it's very important to us and to our sponsor that it is clear and transparent communication. What we don't do, though, and we are also clear with this, is that we deliberately don't track and monitor our donations during the day. So some matching gift campaigns, you will see people with um, a thermometer and they'll say, oh, we're getting closer, we're getting closer, only this much more. The donations come in through multiple channels. They come in at our front door, they come in over the phone, and through Canada Health, and we commit to not add up the donations until the next morning. So we report the results first thing the next morning after Giving Tuesday. So to us, um, and we, we also only do our promotion early in the day. Because now, a few years into it, we know that there's a strong probability that we are going to exceed the match. Um, and so we want to make sure that we have good integrity by not having to be in a position where if someone says, well, how much have you raised? And I say, we've raised over. We just deliberately don't let ourselves look at the information. Right. And I, I mean, it seems to have worked. Pe you know, people sometimes ask, but at the same time, we're five years in, and every year we've publicly announced the total. Um, and it doesn't appear to be a concern. People, I think, also now just jump on the movement of Giving Tuesday. It feels good. It's, uh, what, what, what worked well for you guys? And if you think to me, Tom, you've got really impressive social media results. Um, was there something in particular that, that was there? Were there challenges you had to overcome to get that? Uh, who are you asking that to? In, I, I just I was asking you that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so absolutely. So I think it's, I feel like uh, a Giving Tuesday, like about 80% happens on social media. So it's extremely important, really join the conversation, be very, very busy 
uh, on social media. So basically what we do, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, we already prepare our all social media posts and we schedule them for the day off. So we don't have to focus on the day off, so we can focus on actually what we are doing in real time. So we try to be as very busy as possible, plus we're also checking out what others are doing, um, are tweeting, if it's on Twitter, kind of joining, and to make sure that we're always, uh, no matter what time people will log into their social media channels, we make sure that our, like Fred Victor is always on the top there and that we're talking about Giving Tuesday and Giving Tuesday. One thing what we learned about a couple of years ago when it comes to social media, and this is the very first time we tried something like that, the first time we tried paid social media advertising was with our Giving Tuesday campaign and actually turned really, really successful because, of course, that day a lot of charities are participating, right? So a lot of uh, people out there, your followers and supporters will, will see that every single charity is doing it. So it's really, really important, again, uh, maybe make sure you're on top of their newsfeed channel. So if your charity uh, has not used or is not practicing maybe a paid promotion, so that's a great opportunity to do that on Giving Tuesday because you also get a lot more value for your dollar because Giving Tuesday is a popular popular on its own. So you really, really, uh, really taking a maximum advantage uh, on that. Uh, so I guess that's basically would be it about social media. So my, my uh, key point is like you have to be on social media pretty much uh, the whole day. The more you are, the better will be your results. Great. Thank you so much. Um, just be quickly before I go to Anna, just to let our attendees know that uh, if you have questions, feel free to enter them in the questions panel anytime, uh, and we will start getting to your questions. Um, later in, in the webinar, but first, um, Hannah, you mentioned that you use lots of different channels, including social and email, uh, to get this message out, leverage and match, and this, and this key message that all, your, all of your board were behind this. Did some of that work better than others? What worked best? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, as we know, different demographics are on different types of social media. Um, so we, uh, for our board match, we ask folks to, to take a photo of themselves with a little sign that says, you know, I'm, I'm supporting Ten Oaks for Giving Tuesday or I'm donating to Ten Oaks because whatever. Um, and so part of our, our work that we found successful has been targeting um, different demographics on different social media platforms. So things like Snapchat and Instagram are, are better for younger uh, younger folks for engaging them. They're not, they're not really on Facebook anymore in the same way. Um, and so donors that might um, appeal to them a bit more or if the donor is listing a, a reason why they're, they're giving that has to do with our youth programs, perhaps the social media channel that's most appropriate there is Instagram. Um, but then Facebook is also really, really great with our, our older donors. Um, and by older, I mean my age, 30 plus. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, uh, so the tailoring some of the messages or just being selective about which channel we post which which thing on um, and, and the language and, and things like that. Um, so Matt, I'm going to stay with you um, and we're going to move on to talk about 2019. Um, mm -hmm. You've developed a little bit of a, of a tradition now as well. Um, done this for a few years in a row. Um, so what are your goals for, for your campaign for 2019? Yeah, for sure. So similar to, to Karen and Team Nova Scotia, we're, we're working with what we know works, um, so not changing it up too much. We're going to be doing a board match um, again this year, but with uh, a little bit more of uh, an ambitious goal. Uh, so our goal is going to be in total about $7,500. Um, with hopefully half of that being matched by our, our board. Um, we're going to play a little bit with the, the question we ask people to reflect on of, you know, you know, are they giving an honor of somebody? Why are they supporting Ten Oaks? What, what element um, right. in particular is speaking to them? So that, that's the part that we switch up. We found this, this medium works really well uh, for us, and I think it's really, really powerful for people to see 
uh, the folks who are actually connected to, to the organization doing the match. We have done things with a corporate matching donor before, um, and just because of, of who we are, I think it probably wasn't a, a logical fit in the same way. It was still um, successful, but not as successful as we've had with, with having our, our board be the, the match. So we're going to be continuing right. with that uh, and, and continuing to ask our, our board members and also other supporters who are giving to us for giving to do feel like posting a, a little sign of themselves or um, saying why they're giving to Ten Oaks to post it on their own channels because that allows us to reach more people and more potential new donors as well. Great. So Kevin, um, I won't put you on the spot and ask you to predict um, it's, um, it's every year such an astonishing result uh, to post that uh, so, so much more donations than your than your match amount. So I won't put you on the spot and ask you to predict what you think your your twenty five thousand dollar match will get. But are you layering on any additional goals this year? Uh, any new objectives for twenty nineteen? We're really not. Um, we try with this campaign to keep it as simple as possible. The primary goal for us is always um, to generate financial support. We don't, there are lots of campaigns where we push advocacy messaging and really want to connect with people. This is a quick and easy transaction. Um, so yeah, I think I don't want to make it more than what it is. And I, I, I can predict that we will hopefully get at least $15,000 more because that's what the sponsorship has increased by. Uh, but really we do consider that we're in maintenance mode and that we are always mindful and have our eye on the ball that as soon as it starts to show signs of dropping off, we realize we will need to get creative and change our strategy. I don't think that the matching gift from the same sponsor will work for 10 years. I also didn't think it would work for five. So I don't want right. to give it up until the community tells us that we should give it up. Right. Well, right now you've got an exciting tradition there. And so uh, good luck with yeah. uh, another um, bigger year. Yeah, for sure. One thing I should just mention is something that has worked well for us is just this, the timing of the communication. So um, some very simple, quick tips, if I can give. We send out um, an email and social media post one day out from Giving Tuesday saying, mark your calendar now, Tuesday, December, whatever, or whatever the day happens to be each year, is a great day to give. We will have a matching campaign. And so that goes out as a heads up to people. I know that some people hold their gifts and so maybe that you know the few days before giving Tuesday are a little slower than they might have been otherwise but to us it still pays off um, on the big day and then we do a reminder the day before giving Tuesday and then on giving Tuesday itself we say now's the day give now so so I think that having a bit of a lead up is really important great advice we definitely see data to support that giving people advanced warning of these campaigns really do does improve Results. Um, Inta, you mentioned that uh, you exceeded your goal last year. Um, what What are you thinking for this year? Okay. Uh, before I <clears throat> Before I reveal our plans for this year, I just want to say something. Kind of continue what Karen said about the email. We also found that email is extremely successful in terms of kind of inviting people to make that donation. However, in the past two years, we discovered that one email is not enough and the best three emails work so the first email is early in the morning around 6 a.m. when everybody's getting up that's when you kind of announce the giving Tuesday that it's finally here invite people to donate on the second email midday when you kind of report how things are going so far what are you doing and one email I would say late, late in the night as like the final call and that really gives like the final push and it's amazing uh, like it brings in a lot of donations so um, definitely also this year we'll be sending out three emails right so that's just uh, talking about the emails about this year so this year we're actually going very very big and we are planning a very large scale event for general public so we'll definitely uh, offer different kind of opportunities for people to join the movement of giving and definitely many, many ways to engage with Fred Victor brand. So this year we've been also very fortunate. We have approached a couple of our corporate sponsors and only because of, of um, 
the kindness and great support, we'll be able to pull off uh, a larger scale event. I cannot give you out like the details what that's exactly going to be because I have to wait till next week when everything is uh, approved. But definitely, you will you'll hear about that and just. Uh, yeah, just follow us on social media. Um, you will see what that is. But I gotta say, it will, will be great. So yes, we be so, again. Well, out, out I was going to hear more about that. Do you have a Do you have a financial target in mind for this year, or an engagement target either? Absolutely. Anything, so. Uh, so yes, so it's not so, so we definitely yes we do expect to raise some money. Absolutely, but in this this. Um, this year, I guess our brand promotion and raising awareness is is uh, a bigger part of that. So we're really, really hoping to. Uh, I see. I don't know. I can't really measure like based on like how many eyeballs or what we want to get, right? But I am definitely based on the scale of event. I am predicting that our reach will probably be uh, will triple definitely, and I hope that happens also uh, with donations as well. Right. Well, uh, you guys have given us each uh, a little bit of uh, insight into not just what your objectives are next year, but, but what you plan to do with your campaign. So um, I think now we should probably open this up to some audience questions. Um, I've been noticing some of them coming through. Laura is going to guide us through some of these questions for, for the panelists. Awesome. Thank you so much, Woodrow. Um, and thank you, everyone. That was an amazing discussion. And I learned so much as well. It's awesome to hear about everything um, that has gone on and that you've got planned. Um, so we are now going to transition to a few minutes um, just of Q&A. So we're going to open it up to you guys, the audience. Um, so please type your questions into the questions log of your go-to webinar panel. Um, and we're going to try and get through um, as many as we can. We are mindful of time, so if there's any we don't get to towards the end of this presentation you'll have my details you'll have Woodrow's details um, and we can always kind of come to those uh, after this but yeah um, just as we're kind of letting those questions roll in just wanted to pop a recap here of all of these amazing charities giving Tuesday campaign highlights um, just to help inspire you all um, and we'll give everyone about a minute just to get their questions in and then we will take a couple to the floor Laura, it's Karen. Are you are you hoping for silence, or can I throw in one more little quick tip or learning while people are thinking and typing? Oh. Definitely can, Karen. Yeah, feel <laughs> feel free to jump there, in. Sorry, I was trying to work out who was talking there. We're trying to manage the place okay. in one place. <laughs> no, it's okay. This is just a real quick quick little social media learning that we have had. Um, sometimes as marketing creative people, we want to have things look all fancy and cute and think that's the most engaging. We learned um, that the very simple, so if we just look at our Facebook post, we had one Facebook post, it was shown on an earlier slide, that had simply a red background with white text, and it just said, don't forget, tomorrow's the big day, gifts will be matched up to 10,000. And on a different day, we had one with cute little double gingerbreads and logos and stuff. And the one that was a very simple red background white text got twice the number of shares, twice the number of engagements, twice the number of people reached. So that was a specific learning for us um, about, just, yeah, just uh, to play with your graphics and learn from what the, um, the analytics are telling you. Amazing. Thank you so much for that, Karen. It's really useful to have insights like that. Um, awesome. So we are now going to dive into a couple of questions. Thank you so much, everyone, for sending these through. Um, I think we will start off um, with asking how effective are videos and if anyone has any suggestions for how long uh, these should be. I'll probably head over to Inter first if you want to jump in. Thank you. Absolutely. I think videos are very, very effective and you definitely, like, this is how nowadays, uh, this is how people understand and process content and videos are an amazing way to do that. And I would say usually uh, a bit anywhere between 12 to 25 seconds on the video. I wouldn't go longer than that. And I feel like also videos are very effective and it's very easy to to uh, take a video nowadays. So everybody has like a cell phone, right? And anything could be on the video, right? So definitely videos, videos are big. Use videos all the time. Awesome. And Hannah, do you want to add anything to that? 
Yeah, absolutely. We've used um, videos in the past as well, uh, and and they've been of people who uh, our communities and our donors would would know personally and connect with. So different camp staff or um, somebody who's a camper and and is now volunteering, um, because then there's that that recognition and that that personal connection to the video and to the message. Um, and I think like like Karen said, it's also has that very much DIY feel. It's not very, that's very polished. It's, you know, shot on an iPhone. Um, and that really seems to appeal to people. I think it perhaps makes it more approachable and um, accessible. So we've had, we've had great success there. So I wouldn't be turned off by videos, even if you feel like you, you don't have the capacity to do something really shiny. Um, I think it's, it's great to do that sort of the DIY route as well. Awesome, thanks for that. Yeah, I agree. I think that storytelling element and that personal feel really adds an amazing touch to those campaigns for sure. Um, Karen, did you want to jump in on this question as well? I can say I think I need to learn to apply my own message of simplicity to videos. We do a really great impactful job of creating um, first, vo first voice stories and videos for individuals who have been supported in the past. They're very impactful and very effective in a presentation format when you have someone's undivided attention. They tend to be about two minutes long, and we definitely have learned that they are not easily shareable through social media. So all video styles have their place, but I agree with the previous comments that short and to the point is going to work best for um, digital sharing, social media. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much for that, Karen. Um, so we will jump to the second question now. Um, we've got a question in here that is, what is a typical budget to run a first year campaign with paid social media? Um, so maybe if we just head over in the same order again, Inta, I'll pass off to you. Okay, thank you. So the quick answer, there is no typical budget. So the first time ever when we uh, tried our first paid social media promotion we literally our budget was twenty dollars because first of all we didn't know what we were doing we hadn't we didn't have enough knowledge uh, we are like kind of like really hoping for a miracle and it, it, it did work of course now four years later right we actually have a budget and it, it goes anywhere between five thousand to to fifteen thousand dollars but that's not only for just a giving Tuesday but if you've never done paid social media, I would strongly recommend start with something maybe a little bit smaller amount, uh, even if that's $100 or $200 or $300. But uh, definitely, definitely try that out. But yeah, there is no, there's no typical budget for that. So nice to hear how it kind of started off and then it's transitioned uh, to grow. Amazing. Um, Hannah, would you like to speak to this question as well? Yeah, absolutely. We also do paid uh, social media advertising, and we're a smaller nonprofit. Our, our budget is about four hundred thousand a year, so um, our, <laughs> we're spending a lot less than than into um, just because we don't have as much. And, and I agree, there's no no typical budget. I would test it out with a small amount. I think now we we probably don't spend over over a hundred dollars, and we've been we've been doing this for a few years. But start off with with twenty or thirty, and and see where it goes. Um, but I would also be mindful of your audience. You can do um, paid advertising on social media with with a lot of different platforms, and so figure out. Uh, where where it's worth it, you know, is it Instagram, is it Facebook, is it something on Twitter, um, you know, who's your demographic and audience that you're trying to reach and, and where are they found most. Amazing, great, great advice there. Um, and then lastly, yeah, Karen, would you also like to speak to this question? Sure, but there's no doubt um, way, way more of our social media is it's just free, simple posts. Uh, the most we have ever spent on a social media advertising, paid advertising, was three fifty, I think, three hundred and fifty dollars. So um, it's very rare that we do um, paid ads or boosts. But um, I, I think the best thing is to just work and spend your time throughout the year and keep at it to grow your following. And I think it's more impactful when our followers and friends share the information than if someone sees it as a paid post. That's in our experience. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, and I think that's great. Um, it's obviously fantastic if you have that budget to spend, but it's also kind of possible if that budget's not there. There's definitely ways to sort of tap into supporters. Um, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, guys. Um, 
we've got another question in here, which I know is one that a lot of you will be interested in. Um, and this is, how do you approach companies to become a matching sponsor? Um, so, Inta? Oh, well, first of all, we always come up with some kind of like really, really cool idea, the way how we kind of structure our pitch. We structure it and sort of in a way that uh, corporate partners, they will want to be our sponsors. And it's also kind of easy, especially for the Giving Tuesday, because Giving Tuesday, it's already a brand itself, and a lot of companies, at least here in Toronto, are actually, actually, they want to be partners, they want to be supporters, they want to not only be associated with our charity, but they also want to be associated with Giving Tuesday as a movement. So when basically, first of all, we kind of look around, right, and narrow down a list, like, who are those corporate partners that we would like to approach, very often there's a lot of corporate partners, you know, that our board members are connected or some other corporations that we've been sort of um, working for, for, for a couple of years. But then also we kind of look out in our neighborhood, right? Like what's, what's around us? And we have approached local coffee shops, local restaurants, local shops and, and stores as well. So we just go in and, and we talk and we, we kind of pitch them. And so this is, this is what we like to do. And this is why we think you want to join us. And that's how we start the conversation. And I got to say, very, very often, it's a positive outcome because why not? Like, people want to be associated with Giving Tuesday and companies want to be associated with doing good stuff. Yeah, Aman, awesome. Thank you so much. I think that's a really good point as well. Like, because Giving Tuesday is already such a movement, so many people already know about it. So it kind of removes that initial barrier of having to head to an organization and explain kind of what you're doing. They already know about Giving Tuesday, so it can be a great way to start the conversation. Um, fantastic. Hannah, would you like to also speak to this question? Yeah, if you could just repeat the question first. <laughs> For sure. Um, so we were just asking about how you would go about approaching companies um, to be a matching sponsor. Yeah, so we, um, as I mentioned before, we don't do this for Giving Tuesday, but we do for other another fundraising event, a couple of them that we do, um, and some of our, our sponsors are multi-year ones, which in those cases you already have a working relationship with them, um, but for the, the other ones, I, I tend to look to our, our network, so is there you know, a company that's owned by uh, or worked at by a parent of one of our campers or, you know, who are board members connected to or, and and could be anything. Um, I think the main thing for us has been to have um, a corporate um, sort of gift acceptance policy guide just so we make sure that it's uh, in line with our values who we're approaching. Um, but just, just cold calling or walking into places has worked really well. Um, and, and the power of stories is not to be underestimated. So I, I definitely use that in, in my pitch for these. Amazing. Thank you so much for that, Hannah. Um, and Karen? Sure. Um, well, in the case of our specific Giving Tuesday sponsor, when we did first start this, um, we we didn't we we wanted to start with someone that we knew we'd have good success with. So we went to a warm prospect. Um, we already had a relationship with Sobeys, but it wasn't at this level and in this format. But that gave us the ability to just pick up the phone and at least um, broach the subject with them. So it wasn't a cold call. But then we did support it because you can't take anything for granted. Um, we put together a written proposal outlining our plan, uh, why we believed that it would be successful. So we referenced um, other matching gift campaigns that we had seen in market, as well as one of our own from years before. Um, and we really played up the fact that this was a way for them to have an even bigger impact that didn't all have to come out of their budget. They, they can be part of celebrating this you know, 100,000 plus campaign, now it's grown, with um, a relatively modest financial investment, so playing up that you are the you are the hero because you are leveraging additional support. That was really important to us. Um, I think that people people um, like to follow success. We actually um, last no two maybe it was three years ago actually we had another company come to us and they they specifically referenced the Sobeys Giving Tuesday match and said they wanted to do a similar campaign. So they approached us asking if they could be a matching gift sponsor for a new campaign, which we have subsequently launched. So I think that um, if, if you can demonstrate success that matching gift campaigns have had, 
it will boost your, your success rate. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does. No, for sure. That makes perfect sense. And super interesting to hear that you've now got sort of people approaching you from that success. Um, that's awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much uh, for all of your wisdom. Um, we are going to wrap up the question and answer session now. We actually have loads of great questions coming in, um, but we're actually going to move on to sort of a tactics um, and like tips and tools for Giving Tuesday, which will probably answer quite a few of those. Um, and we will also be sending out um, a handy guide to kind of get your campaign off the ground after this webinar. So that as well should also answer quite a few of those questions. And as I said, our contact details are at the end. If there's anything burning that hasn't been answered, feel free to give me a call or give me an email. I'm always there. Um, fantastic. Okay, so for those of you who can, uh, we really encourage you to stick around. Um, I'm going to pass back to Woodrow now, who's going to walk through some key Giving Tuesday insights from the past uh, few years. And then after that, we'll also go over some uh, quick tactics just to cap off the presentation. So Woodrow, back to you. Yeah, I'm just going to try to share my screen again. Um, no worries at all. Take the time you need. Okay, so hopefully... Are we good? <laughs> all right, I think so. If you can see with my map slide, then I am back in control. Uh, it was great to hear the, awesome. uh, the, that great advice from the panel panelists. One of the things I heard there that I thought was really great is when you're approaching a corporate sponsor now, you can be taking the, uh, the, the strategy that you, you're giving them an opportunity to be involved in Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday is getting bigger, awareness is growing across Canada. There, uh, there are over 40 community campaigns. One of the interesting things we're seeing from the community campaigns developing is not just geographic campaigns, where we have a city, a town, a province getting together and getting local politicians involved in schools and organizations, which has been the classic model, but we're, see we're seeing increasingly uh, communities, um, cause communities, communities of uh, culture and color, so that's been really exciting to see that that develop organically. Um, there are now over 7,000 charities and businesses participating as partners in Giving Tuesday. Um, last year was the sixth year and was the biggest ever, um, and we're just seeing continued growth. Um, it's really important to remember that this is Giving Tuesday, not Fundraising Tuesday, and it's fine to have a, a campaign that's primarily a fundraising campaign. But one of the interesting things that we've learned, first of all, lots of really creative ways that organizations and communities are getting people to give back on the day. Here are a few examples on this slide, some really fun stuff. Um, and one of the most important learnings from our data work globally, and this is certainly true in Canada, is that most people who participate in Giving Tuesday do so in more than one way. Just giving money is the least common way that people participate. So I think this is important because it's telling us that donors are looking for a more experiential engagement, and so we should be giving them lots of opportunities to get involved. Um, that said, it's a big day for donations. Um, we saw a, a, another big lift last year. Um, for the first time ever, we had enough input from a variety of sources to be able to put a number on the fundraising results online on Giving Tuesday in Canada last year. We measured over $15 million raised in 24 hours only online. Uh, and we know we're not capturing a lot of the activity that's actually happening because it's just too many campaigns and too many sources. We hope to get a better sense of that uh, this year. So we know that's a fraction of what was given, and again, it's only online, uh, but this continues to be a really big day. In the U.S., and we're seeing this trend in Canada as well, Giving Tuesday is growing online faster than online giving overall. So it really is becoming um, one of the biggest days of the year, and by number of donations, it looks to be coming very soon the biggest day of the year uh, for online giving. So this is a really important opportunity. Um, to, get, to get involved and to make sure that you're out there. Donors are giving to more causes on Giving Tuesday than they do on a typical day. It's an opportunity for celebration, collaboration, instead of competition. Um, and so making sure you're out there uh, with a, an opportunity for your supporters 
to support you with their with money and lots of other ways they can get involved. They want to lend their voice, they want to volunteer, they want to give stuff. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're crafting your campaign. Laura, do you want to talk about some of the tactics to address that? Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for that, Woodrow. Super interesting stuff. Um, amazing stats, and we really hope this kind of encourages everyone to go out there and get involved. Um, so just before uh, we... We kind of jump into the tactics. We're actually just going to do our third and final poll. Hopefully, you guys are all with us. I know it's getting to four o'clock. Well, I guess for people that are in this time zone anyway. Um, so keeping everyone yeah, on their toes. So our third question here is, have you started planning your Giving Tuesday campaign for this year? Um, so I've just started planning for Giving Tuesday. Maybe you're just putting the final touches on the campaign. Or maybe you're ready. Bring it on. Uh, so, yeah, we'll just give you a couple of seconds, I guess, to, to throw that in. Oh, I'm liking these results as they're rolling in. Awesome. Okay, amazing. So it looks like 87% of you have just started planning for Giving Tuesday. Well, there you go. You're in the right place. This is all part of it. Now you can, you're close to putting the final touches on after this webinar. 5% um, putting the final touches and 8% of you, I'm ready, bring it on. Maybe we'll have to shift it earlier than December 3rd. People are ready to go. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for that, guys. Okay, so now, um, and I am conscious of time. Time, um, but we really want to dive into this. So here at Canada Helps, um, we are putting together a handy guide that we're going to send out to you and um, that just gives you some sort of uh, tips and ideas to get that campaign off the ground. Um, we basically got kind of 10 key tactics that you'll see in there and we'll dive into a lot deeper, but we just kind of wanted to touch on these here because they can be great things to think about just as you are all starting to think about Giving Tuesday, which 87% of you are, so ideal timing. So number one, Set your goals and objectives. Um, a lot of you at the beginning said that you'd participated uh, before in Giving Tuesday. So reflect on last year. What worked? What didn't work? What are the lessons for this year? Um, I know from chatting to Woodrow, he was telling me that um, setting a goal is the most important factor for a successful campaign. So really think about what you want to achieve on Giving Tuesday. Um, this goal really will be the focal point for everything you do on that day. Um, and also, and Woodrow echoed this uh, before, um, that the goals can be more than just those uh, dollars rolling in through donation. Do you know, see how many people engage, how many sign up for the, your newsletter or maybe sign up to be volunteers. Um, all of these can be awesome like performance indicators that kind of go on beyond those donation dollars. So number two, uh, define your audience. So ensuring that you have that clear goal set will then really influence who you want to reach on Giving Tuesday. So this can really be a great time to kind of build lists and just segment your donors. Um, so which donors have given to a Giving Tuesday campaign in the past, or maybe you've got a set of donors that have given to a similar cause that your campaign will tap into. Um, who are your regular donors? Who are your new donors? Just kind of making these lists will allow you to sort of build specific messages for each of those different donor groups. Um, but also you'll find these lists really interesting um, interesting and useful post Giving Tuesday um, to kind of shape your end of year fundraising and any ongoing fundraising too. And number three, uh, form your Giving Tuesday team. So this really is the time to assemble your A team. It makes it takes a team to make the Giving Tuesday dream. I came up with that all on my own. I'm really proud. Um, so yeah, involve all of your colleagues and just get everyone on board. It's an amazing global movement, as you've heard. Um, so it can be a great one to kind of get everyone uh, all hands on deck. And if you guys have a small team or maybe you're a one man or one woman team, um, engage volunteers. Um, people want to help. It's an exciting day. So yeah, just kind of get that team on the ground. Uh, number four craft your message and story. Uh, this now really is vital to the success of your campaign um, and it should be done with your audience in mind. Be clear in your messaging and keep it simple so that your audience knows exactly what your campaign is about. I think this can be quite a tricky one um, because so many of your organizations do such a range of incredible things um, and often work to serve really complex and multifaceted causes, but just ensure on Giving Tuesday that the message is succinct and it's accessible to donors, even the, those ones that haven't kind of come across your organization before. 
Um, and even better, if possible, make sure that your story gets across your impact. Um, donors who understand the impact of their donation, um, it can be a huge motivating factor when choosing to give. So if possible to get kind of some of the impact of your work in there, make sure that is in there. Number five, identify your communication channels. Um, so figure out in advance where are you going to share this Giving Tuesday story um, and then plan all of your content accordingly. Uh, for example, if you're going to shout out on Twitter, make sure you've got content ready to go uh, in no more than 280 characters long. Apparently, I'm really old because I thought it was 140 characters. So I'm glad marketing have corrected me there. I am not with the times. Um, but yeah, use all kind of channels. Be really creative. Try some new things. Uh, stories and words are obviously amazing. Um, but images, memes, and GIFs really grab attention. I'm a huge fan of GIFs in all aspects of life. So I think throw some of those in there for sure. Number six, uh, create a clear and simple call to action. And again, this is super, super important. So every story really needs a clear call to action. And when I say call to action, it can be, you know, donate now, join the movement, or maybe post a selfie. Um, it's amazing to share these stories, but without clear direction for supporters um, how, of how they can engage with you, um, a lot will be lost. So just make sure that call to action is there. Number seven, uh, set up a way to measure results. So make sure you're tracking the results of all your amazing work. You will have put so much work into this, so you really want to see kind of what success you've had. So set up performance tracking uh, for everything from link clicks uh, to social media impressions, site visits, and obviously those important donation dollars. Uh, this will obviously allow you to measure the success of your campaign this year, um, but it can also help you to guide uh, your future campaigns. When you have an amazing campaign this year, It'll just push you next year to go even further. Number eight, reach out to your audience. So don't wait for your audience to come to you. Go out and connect with them. If, for example, you want people to donate online, make sure you broadcast that link to the donation form loud and proud. Publish it on your website, tweet it, email it out. Um, and this engagement, um, as I think Karen spoke to, it can really start now. So even with the lead up um, to Giving Tuesday, you can kind of begin to get that excitement uh, kind of rolling. And make sure you involve your audience too. So if you are kind of popping all these things on social media, if possible, interact with donors, really empower them to share your story and make sure they shout about who they'll be supporting on this coming Giving Tuesday. Number nine, thank your donors and continue the conversation. So when Giving Tuesday is all said and done, make sure you tap into Thank You Thursday, which is so conveniently named there. Uh, the days after Giving Tuesday are obviously provide the perfect opportunity as a first touch point uh, with new donors. So it really allows you to build those relationships, but you can also really cement those relationships you have with ongoing donors. So even just a simple thank you um, can be amazing and give them something to look forward to as well. Although Giving Tuesday is the Tuesday, it definitely doesn't finish at midnight and this can be a prime opportunity for awesome donor stewardship opportunities and just to keep that push going um, for your end of year fundraising and number 10 review your results and set the stage for next year um, so yeah at the end of giving tuesday just collect all of those uh, performance measures that you put in place and just review how it all went so sit with your team you survived it um, have a cup of tea cup of coffee and just debate everything um, that that was done and it can really help you to see kind of how successful it was um, but also again can guide you for the coming years Awesome. Just a couple of additional points to wrap up, and I'm getting, I'll probably get shouted at because we are conscious of time, but just a few things I wanted to say as well. So yeah, as everyone's kind of echoed, Giving Tuesday might just be the Tuesday, but the campaign certainly isn't limited to one day. As Inter said, Fred Victor, for example, used this to kick off their holiday fundraising. So when Giving Tuesday's over, you can update those forms, you know, maybe take the Giving Tuesday specific content off, but keep that same ask and the same call to action and just re-engage those donors that gave on that day and get them to recommit for your end of year campaign. 
Another thing that I think is really important to say when you hear all of these amazing stories and amazing success that organizations have had is just don't be overwhelmed. Um, for those of you who haven't done this before or have done this and it didn't go exactly as planned, it really is a day for organizations of all sizes. And as Woodrow said at the very beginning, there really is no right way to do this. So just kind of get stuck in and, and see what you guys can uh, create. Um, there is a toolkit and loads of awesome information on the Giving Tuesday website and also as we mentioned Canada Helps will be sending out a handy guide to kickstart your campaign too. Um, another thing to say please make use of myself and also the lovely engagement team here at Canada Helps. We really are here to support you um, in any way we can just to ensure you have the fundraising tools to implement your fantastic campaign. And most importantly, guys, have fun. You literally are all awesome. Um, we work in an amazing sector. I absolutely love working in this sector. And everyone is so passionate about what we do. So I really think Giving Tuesday can just be an amazing place to sort of harness that. And last but not least, when it's all over, if we all survive, give yourself a good pat on the back. Celebrate with your team. Be proud of everything that you did and all that you continue to do. You are the best, and we love you. You're all rock stars. Awesome. Ta-da! Okay, so I think that is all we have time for right now and we are so yeah so mine and Woodrow's contact details are just up on here so as I said feel free to reach out to us at any point point. Um, if you have any questions we didn't get to uh, feel free to shoot those across as always thank you so much uh, for joining our webinar the next one that we're hosting will be about accepting donations of securities featuring Paul Nazareth Jacob O'Connor and Joanne Perrier all fantastic humans. Uh, so look out for the invite email if you're subscribed or visit our Charity Life blog on canadahelps.org to register. Of course, we'd like to give a massive thank you to Woodrow, Inter, Hannah and Karen for an inspiring panel session and for sharing their stories and giving Tuesday excitement. I am absolutely psyched. Uh, from all of us at Canada Helps, have a great day. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, team.